Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday. Whew, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I thought about not coming on, but I said, no, Lord, I have <clears throat> made a promise. I have made a commitment to do what you asked me to do, no matter how I feel, if you give me the strength, if you give me the mind um, to get up and do what you called me to do, I am without excuse. So here I am, continue reading our devotional. And the title of today's devotional is From Now On. From Now On. And that reference scripture can be found in Luke 5 and 10. And I'm going to read that out of my study Bible. Hold on. I should have marked it, but it shouldn't take me long to find it. Uh, that is mine. 10. And so, wait a minute. What was it? We were, yeah, Luke 5 and 10. Well, I'm going to read this part. Simon was awestruck at the miracle and his first response was to realize his own insignificance in comparison to this man's greatness. Peter knew that Jesus had heard, had healed the sick and driven out demons, but he was amazed by that. He was, but he was amazed that Jesus cared about his day to day routine and understood his needs. God is interested not only in saving us, but also in helping us in our daily activities. Just as I was speaking on yesterday, God wants to be included. He wants to be invited. I don't care how insignificant or small you think it is. He wants to be a part of it. He wants you to ask, what do you think? How do you think I should go about this? Who do you think I should partner with? Do you think I should go at, you know, do you think I should go at this all by myself? Because God knows the heart of man. Sometimes we want to bring along certain people because of who they are, but their heart may not be in the heart posture that yours is. And now you got a shipwreck. Now there's confusion. Now there's conflict. Consult God in everything, no matter how insignificant you, that you may think it is. Include him. Let's get into this read. It said, do not be afraid. This is Luke 5 and 10. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. You will be successful. That's what he's saying in a nutshell. When speaking of evangelism, the first word that Jesus said were, fear not. He was probably referring, referring to the overwhelming reference Peter felt at the magnitude of the miracle he had just witnessed. When we think of who Jesus really is, how can we help but, be, but tremble? The incarnation is breathtaking on so many levels. Jesus even had control over the shore of fish in the ocean. When it comes to evangelism, most of us are paralyzed by fear. We are afraid of being rejected. We are afraid of not knowing what to say. How many of us would just be honest and just say, I've been there? <laughs> You've been in the midst of a family member or a friend or a co-worker, a stranger on the street. And you know God told you to just witness to them, encourage them. But you start judging how they looked on the outside. That overwhelming fear crippled you, handicapped you. And you walked on by, didn't say a word. However, if we care about humanity and where they will spend eternity... And if we believe in a very real hell, we will say with we will say with the disciples, we cannot 
but speak that which we have seen and heard. We can only speak what we've seen and heard. We can only, because we're witnesses of what we've seen and what we have heard. And that can be found in Acts 4 and 20. May evangelism become our priority. Let's begin to catch men now. So whatever God is asking you to do, I don't care how you feel inadequate, that you're not good enough, that you're not enough, that you've made too many mistakes. Because you know how it is when you try to tell people about certain things not to do, then they want to bring up what you did. But I'm trying to keep you from going down that same road. It's not to say that I'm better. It's not to say that I haven't traveled down that road. I don't want you to travel down that road. And we're going to do some soul searching. Am I more concerned for my own well-being than I am that guilty sinners will end up in hell? Am I more concerned about myself that I allow fear to keep my mouth closed and my brother and my sister can spend eternity in hell? That's being selfish. Do I need to repent of my lack of concern. If you now, now come on now, we human, you know, some of this stuff is just human nature, just part of our beings. If you struggle with being concerned and compassionate about the souls of others, pray and ask God to increase your concern, to give you that concern, to boost your concern. Because it's easy to just think about yourself and not think about your brother and your sister. As long as I'm good, I ain't worried about them. They need to stop doing what they're doing. Where's their compassion? You don't know what they're battling with. You don't know what they're struggling with. So what does a word of encouragement, what is that going to hurt? Your concern, your compassion, what is that going to hurt? Your love, what is that going to hurt? Your kindness, what is that going to hurt? Is that love and kindness have I drawn thee? Who are you drawing this morning? Who are you showing kindness to this morning? Who are you showing compassion and concern towards this morning? And here's the prayer. Father, help me to be fisher of men from now on. Lord, everywhere I go, wherever you allow me to trot my feet, there's going to always be someone. The ocean is full of fish. The world is full of men and women. We are without excuse. Even when you go going to work, there's somebody that you can witness to. At church, there's always someone coming that you can witness to. Standing at the bus stop, there's someone that you can witness to. You getting on that plane to go on your fabulous vacation, there's someone that you can witness to. In the grocery store, there's someone that you can witness to. We are without excuse. If you're struggling with fear, we've been there. I've been there. Sometimes I'm still there. <laughs> but if you're battling with fear, pray and ask God because he does not give us the spirit of fear. He gives us the sound mind. Clarity, understanding, wisdom, knowledge. He doesn't give us a spirit of fear. Fear is an injection uh, uh, um, that causes one to be still, to be stagnant, not to move forward, not to move into the things of God. And while your brother and sister is laid waste, you're full of God's word. And God is saying, the word that I put in you, I didn't put it there for it to lay dormant. See, God's word, that's our lures. You know, when they go fishing, they use different lures and worms and different things that they put on, on, on the fishing pole before they throw. They don't throw out the naked pole. 
you know, they put something on there to attract, to get the fish attention. God's word is our lure. God's word is our worm. God's, God's word is what he's given us to get the attention of men, to get the attention of women, to get the attention of his children. So I may not be fishing with what God has given you to fish with, but he's given me something to fish with. And whatever he's given you to use, use that. Wherever he tell you to go and use it, use it. Whatever platform he tell you to go on, use it. Whatever stage he tell you to walk on, use it. Don't worry about what lure somebody else is using. Oh, theirs, theirs look bigger and theirs look more expensive and theirs look more uh, fancy. Use the lure that God gave you. Because if you use what he gave you, it's going to be effective. He said his word won't return to him void. The only way it's returning is because you're not using it. You're not casting your, your reel, your rod. Your fishing pole. What have God given you? That you are just allowing it to go to waste, to lay dormant. You done went and hid it. You're ashamed of it. You don't think, you know, that you'll be able to attract, get anyone's attention. You, I think the Bible says, you know, that man in the Bible, he said, you wicked. You know, you, <laughs> no matter where you go, if I've given it to you to use, it's going to be effective. I don't care where you go and use it at, but just use it. Don't go and hide it. Don't go dig up a hole and put it in there and just say, well, you know, don't nobody want to hear from me. You know, they know my past. They know I was an alcoholic. They know I was a drug, drug addict. They know I was a prostitute. It doesn't matter. Whatever God has given you, God gave that to you knowing you was a prostitute, knowing you was an alcoholic, knowing you was a fornicator. Knowing that you was molested. Knowing that you was abused. Knowing that you broke up homes. But he gave it to you anyway. That's the reason why he said we are without excuse. That's the reason why you can't allow fear. You can't allow people. To back you in a corner. Bringing up what you did. That's not an excuse. Because when you stand before him, you're not going to be able to bring up what mama said you couldn't do, what daddy said you couldn't do, what your friend said you would never be. That's not going to be good enough. That's not going to be good enough. So whatever God has given you to cast out this morning, use it. Whatever fishing pole, string, uh, worm, a lure, whatever he's given you to use, that's what you use. That's what you use. Be confident that what he gave you, what he put on the inside of you, is just as good. It's just as effective. Because it's easy to look at what somebody else got, what somebody else is doing, and how great uh, someone else appeared to be. God said, I have no respect of person. But what's for you is for you, and what's for me is for me. You are great. You are great. You are important. You do matter. Matter not your mistakes. Matter not your shortcomings. Even if you, you say, Yolanda, you don't, you don't know I stutter. Oh, God is sending an interpreter with you. He did it in the Bible. 
you know, Elon, you don't understand. I, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I can't read. There's always going to be a reader in the bunch. So we are without excuse. Whatever you lack, whatever your shortcomings is, God will have somebody in the room. God just asked me, will you show up? Because if I gave it to you, I know you could use it. So don't allow your past. Don't allow what you did and didn't do. Don't allow what others done to you to stop you from being fishermen of men, of your brothers and your sister, because that's what we are to one another. And if you care about yourself, if you care anything about yourself, you will care, you will care about your brother and your sister. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. When I see them, I should see me. I got to get out of here. I pray something was said. From now on, <laughs> from this point on, don't allow fear to rob you. Don't allow fear to stop you. Don't allow your past to cripple you. Because at the end of the day, we all got a past. We all got skeletons. Somebody I've heard some people say, oh, my best friend know everything about me. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. Ain't nobody telling telling nobody everything that they done done, everything that they done did, everything that they done thought. No, ain't nobody doing that. Ain't no such thing. Ain't no such thing. So I'm going to get off here. I pray something was said that will touch your heart and that um, that will cause you to get back up again, to try again, to fish again, to cast again. Just be who God called you to be, no more, no less. You are great. God said he has no respect to person. He's not going to give you more than what he give me. But what's for me is for me. And what's for you is for you. All we got to do is be obedient. All we have to do is do what God called us to do. Don't allow nothing or no one to tell you how great you are or how great you are not. So with that being said, speak life over your circumstance, your situation, your friends, your foes. Those that say that you will never be anything. Those that say that you will never amount to anything. Those that say that you will never go anywhere. Those that say that you've done way too much. Those that say that you wasn't the, the parent that you should have been. Don't even let that stop you. Because God knew your shortcomings. God didn't expect you to be perfect. God knew we was going to make mistakes. God knew that at some things we was going to fail. But he still say you without excuse. If you want to cast something out, cast out your excuses. Do away with your excuses. And let go, let go of the fears. And cast your net. And allow God to do the drawing. I got to get out of here again. I pray something was said that will touch your heart. Whatever God is asking you to do. Whatever your calling is. From now on. From this point on, from this day on, cast out your net. Cast out your net. You don't know who God is trying to get you to reach. So you got to get out of fear. One plant, another water, he does the increase. Until next time, everyone, have an amazing day. Um, have an awesome weekend. Keep the Brooks family, my hometown, in your prayers. Tomorrow is the funeral of the young lady that lost her life. Such a sad uh, uh, tragedy, tragedy. But God is going to give us strength. Do pray, pray for her mother and her sister and um, and all her friends. She was, uh, she was really loved. 
And so she's really going to be missed, already missed. But just just, just keep her up in prayer. Keep the family up in prayer. We really do need it. Until next time, everyone have an amazing weekend. And I will see you bright and early Monday morning. If God says the same, be blessed.